filmmaking in Africa could be quite a Herculean task for young filmmakers due to shortage of funds, inadequate infrastructure, and a system that does not support young dreams. However, the guest we have in the studio today has surpassed all of these hurdles and has made a name for himself. This is TV Waka, I'm your host, and this is the exclusive interview. Today on the show, we have Hassan Hamed, the filmmaker, a VFX artist, and a storyteller. Hassan Hamed, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here, I swear. It's, it's good honor. to have you. All right. All right, Hassan. Um, we know that your first movie was in 2016. Yes. Aduke. Yes, so that was my first film, 2016. How, yeah. how was the experience for you? Oh wow, um, 2016, uh, it's a long story, but if I start with talking about it, like 2016 I started working on the care, of course now, your first film, you know, money, money issue, and you know, having to organize the right team for your project, you know, everything is like quite taxing, you know, you know, like, and for the first time, you know, everything was a lot to handle, but I was glad that, you know, we had to pull through and we made everything work out fine. So you were still in 300 level? I was in 200 level, actually. Okay. I think I was in the, film, the movie premiered. Uh, uh, the movie premiered second. The movie premiered. I think if I can't even remember, guys. It's, it's been a long time. Because it's I was 300. in two hundred. Okay, two hundred. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> yeah, I think three hundred. Yeah, yeah, three hundred. Yeah, three hundred. Yes. Yeah. Because I I know I did a premiere in Unilag again, twenty seventeen. So yes, okay, yeah, I was in three hundred. Yes, I was in 300, yeah. Yeah. sorry. From the movie, we found out that um, the bulk of the cast were yeah. students. Yeah. Uh, your friends, particularly exactly. people who are skilled in the art um, of you acting, know acting. Yeah. yeah, how how did you go about convincing them to work on the project with you? Well, like that's that's one of the hardest parts, you know, because obviously, like you know, when I was talking to them, I had like literally no like I had no funds to like really pay them that moment because I was I was telling them that yeah, I have this mother's idea for a film or that let's just make it work. Obviously, you now some were not really interested because I had to work changing cast, changing cast, changing cast because. At that moment, they were not really interested. So later, I got the people that were interested, and I told them, "Okay, fine. This is what I'm gonna do. When the premiere comes up, I have a, I, I, like sorry, I have a plan for a premiere that we can use to get money from this film and the rest." So, sure, everything worked out fine, and you know, they got their their cut, and you know, I think that was just what happened. Like the fact that I could make them see the kind of vision I was trying to pull out, you know, that was what just helped the movie. Out. I remember vividly that. The hall was packed for the yeah, premiere. Like yeah. the whole of I was, the rest of it already was, turned out for the premiere. I was I was equally surprised. I was yeah, I was not expecting it. Was amazing. It. I was, it was amazing. It. Also, I remember that T Jan also supported yeah. the movie with videos and all of that. That's amazing. So, when did you figure out that filmmaking was it for you? Oh, well, okay. Growing up, yeah. Growing up, when I used to watch films, when like all those um, um cartoon networks and Nickelodeon, growing up, like I used to wonder that, you know. <sighs> Like most times, because I was always having lessons, 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 lessons. So time, like, so the time I had to watch um, cartoons and films, which end like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that the moment you have time, those kind of spare time to watch, mm -hmm. and you are watching a, like a series that you like, and it's not ending how you wanted it to end. You're like, I was always like bothered. Okay, fine. Why is this thing ending so quickly? Like, I want to make my own film, that guy. I'm watching it myself. You understand? So like that was even what propelled me to want to go into movies the more. So then later I started to see that ah. So it's not as easy as I was thinking, you know, you have to start thinking about money, you have to start, okay, obviously knowing how to edit, knowing how to shoot, knowing how to do all those things. So that was like my first mission, my first goal, to learn how to shoot, to learn how to edit, so that, you know, like, you know, just to boycott way of trying to pay mm -hmm. a very well, large crew. So let me just start learning everything myself. I started doing graphics myself. I started editing myself. I started uh, working on sound. I started shooting. So everything. So if I want to make a film now like this, I know that like, you're only me to do it myself. You understand? That's it. So. So we learned that your dad wasn't entirely supportive of you yeah, doing it wasn't, PF. Though. He wanted you to do law. Yes, no, he wasn't. Because in my house, for instance, everybody are like, my, my other sister, she did geology. My other brother, banking and finance, you know. Mm -hmm. ah, you no, know, everybody, they Family get... professional. Like, exactly. And it was like, I want to go and start playing in school. I want to start <laughs> dancing. So I was like, ah, this is what I want to do and the rest. But later, later, I found a way to boycott everything and... I ended, up, I ended up doing performing arts, but well, I regretted it because I thought that I had like an, an idea for performing arts though. They didn't be really honest. I have an idea, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be like. It was more of this theater, theater stuff. And I, I wanted to go into film, so it really restricted a lot of things. But later, along, along the way, they started doing film. So, and that was too late. I was like 400 when they started doing film. So I was like, what is that the purpose, guys? So I really enjoyed the experience. Do you still so. see yourself going into film school? Uh, okay. 
Okay, let me be honest here. Yeah? Uh, I, I figured out that film school is really restrictive a lot. I feel like, I feel people don't need to go to film school to learn films. Because... You think? I think. Because everything just about yeah. holding a camera. I To be honest, like, I feel like, you know, when you go to film school, you're studying other filmmakers. You're not learning from yourself. You're not making film. You're studying other people. Mm. So, you know, I feel them, they came up with those ideas. Because, okay, imagine now, those people that started working on films, those they, there was no film school before now. Now, them starts film school. Now, so they started film school. So, we are now studying them, and you're studying them, and you're not becoming your, your own kind of filmmaker, you know. I feel like if you have a camera, I feel you can do anything. If you know how to edit, you can learn how to edit anyway. You can enter well, of YouTube. Of course, of course. There's, there's, yeah. there's always room to learn more. Yeah, there's, there's always I mean, room to learn more. If you want to create magic, you need, you, need, you need props. Yes, you need, of course. You need exactly. to see exactly. things yeah. that people have done. But it's okay to yeah. feel like that. Yeah. So, um, as a filmmaker, whose yeah. work do you admire the most? Like, which filmmaker do you admire um, the most? If I just Steven Spielberg, if, if, if obviously Steven Spielberg, uh, Jaws and um, uh, Jurassic Park, Jaws, Jurassic yeah. World, yeah. Just Steven Spielberg at first for me, because I was always wondering that like, I learned that um, the guy like during that those period there was nothing like VFX, you know. During that Jaws period, everything was yes. handmade props and the rest. And just the shark was still believable and everything was still believable. So I was like, ah, ah, yeah, how can someone just calm down and think about this kind of thing? So that was the person that really like pushed me to, and and, and the guy's story was like close to like mine. Because he was this kid that um, you know wanted to make films and he was yes. always trying to mix things together and you know so I, I could relate to his, to his hustle and to the struggle. So that's why I really went with Steven Spielberg. So of 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 all the actors in Nigeria, yeah. Yeah. which actor do you think you'd love to work with in your subsequent projects? Wow. Um. Or should I say which actors? Can, can okay, 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 okay. Let me just before, before, like, like, before I okay, because for a while I was at Africa Magic, I was in IT at Africa Magic for a very long time. Interesting. So I was like, not at first, I was admiring all of them from afar, like, mostly RMB. I wanted to work, see, that's my dream. Even to now, so I wanted to work in RMB because obviously that was somebody we all grew up watching. Yes. So I, I wanted to, I wanted to work, work out, but later, I, when you when you're in Africa Magic, you get to start seeing them a lot, and you're like. Guy, she I know we go the five percent for abroad. The work is good, yeah, because you know the whole professionalism in Nigeria um, film is not like how you hope. You know, everybody, they, you know, the celebrities, they always like you know everybody mm -hmm. likes to feel like you know they can't you can't tell them that's a director you can't do this because there's this series I directed for NTA. I worked with like a few celebrities one time, and you know then I was like very very young and now you be telling them that this is what you want. And they'll be telling you this is what they this, this is what they think is right. And you are the director and you're telling them this. And even these cinematographers that are older than you, they're like, old enough to be my father said cinematographers. And me I'll come, they'll be telling me that this one that does not have any ex that that's when 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 this guy start making film, he tell us what to do. But I'm the director for this film. Now me they like they that's hired the, me that's to come. That's that, that's it. So and when you now see that kind of structure, you're like wondering that you know it's, it's not as I beautiful as you're seeing from a, from afar. So I think let me just be, let me just be realistic. I don't. There's no Nigerian celebrity I feel like working with because I've I've seen a lot of them. But okay, it's outside the shores of Nigeria. Ah ah, there are many. <laughs> <laughs> you are starting to see there are many. Hey, hey. Like who? Ah, 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 Tom Cruise. Uh, <laughs> ah, guy. There's a one shot. Will like Smith. Ah, there are many. Ah, I can start listening to them like this. Ah no no no. no. Well, Let's you know there. you know you know that the same point of view you had about Nigerian yeah. actors yeah. until you met them. When yeah. you when you meet. These um, foreign actors, maybe what we see if you still I, want to act if, if, if I meet with them. If I meet those foreign actors, to be honest, there's nothing they can do that can even change my 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 idea. No, I'll be my because yeah, it's Tom Cruise for crying out loud. If you imagine Tom Cruise being in your film. Just imagine Tom Cruise being in your film. What's the whole new set of inspiration? It's, 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 it's not see it, just do what you want. Do you want to take everybody's role? Do you want to appear? Do you want to appear in everything? No, you just take it, take it, take it, take it. Uh, it's Tom Cruise for crying out loud. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was your experience with African Magic? Oh uh, wow, yeah, it was it was nice at first. So I was in school during that period. I was always going from school to Africa Magic and like I was doing three things. Like I was going from school, I was trying to work on my own film. I was also going to um um if Soul TV. There's Soul TV on um, on NTA. I was always going there too. So I was always, like doing three at the, at the same time. So at Africa Magic it was nice. The experience was really nice. So what exactly were you doing at Africa Magic? Um, okay, I was at this. Uh, uh, I was at this suit. They call it. Um, I can't remember what they call it, but I think it's DOD operation. I can't remember that. Like so, I think DOD. Like there's always this written stuff. DOD. I had no idea what DOD meant, <laughs> but but I know what they were doing there. Like what we like, what we did was like I was at this um um coyote. I was this 
and if it, um, I'm not sure you know him, he's the offline editor for Tinsel, Kyle De Sodik. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I was always at his um, at his own office because he's the person in charge of sending um, content to South Africa, and that's how, that's where they aid. So whatever movies they are showing, they send it through Adam. This thing, this sort of they call Adam. That someone is expecting it in South Africa, and then that one's that's the person that runs it through and plays it to the African Magic channels. Like so I was always there, I, you know, I, and I was opportunity to, I also, I was opportunity to go through different studios, like the people that did all this, um, to the 50 Extra, I was always hanging out there. I was always at, uh, at Tinsel, um, their dressing room. I was always, yeah, I was always, I was always like everywhere, going everywhere to see, you know, where I can pick up a few, like a few things and the rest, but experience was nice. Really nice. On a scale of one to hundred, how much do you think you learned on African Magic? I learned, let me just say, one to hundred, let me just say like twenty, let me just say twenty, because, uh, like you know, mm. I, I was over hundred, over hundred, I said twenty, because I thought I was going to learn more. I thought I, I was going to like go there and you know, you know there's one good thing about learning. When you are going there, you at least you know you can learn, you can learn from me, you can learn from me. But there. They don't, want they, to know, they, 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 they don't want to learn, they don't want to even hear you to talk about, you know, say, ah, who's this guy? You know, you know how everything is in Nigeria now. Who's this guy? What do you have to bring to the table? You know, they have been there for a long, for a long time, man. You cannot just come and start saying, this is what you want to do. You understand? So, so, so you, you had to cope with being looked down on as yeah, a I, young filmmaker. Exactly. I had to go, I was always like, you know, there's this thing that, like, there's this feeling when you know you have a lot of potential, potential. Man, you know, when you can do. So and because, they're all caging you yeah, because all. when I watch okay, when I watch African magic movies, like to be honest, you know some movies on African magic, you wonder how they get there. Like you see some when you start seeing the seeing the sound and you have harvest. you have the money to obviously <laughs> do it. And when you see the sound, you see all those kind of things and like ah, ah. and they pay for those content. African magic pay for those content to, to be aired on African magic. You pay them it might be like five hundred, one million or they pay so them a lot of money. Hold on. Like African magic pays Yeah, for content they pay. Oh, I thought it was the filmmakers that take their content to African Magic. When you take it to African Magic, they pay for that content. Uh, like It's like buying, like sorry, they call it content buying. Me and I as a filmmaker, I go to African Magic, okay fine, this is my film. They go through it and the rest, the content buyer goes through it. And if they like it, if you, if you, meet, if you meet their guideline, they pay you for, the, for it. Wow. Yeah, and they pay based on celebrities, celebrities. That's why if you notice, most movies you see in Nigeria, you don't even, just, guy, yeah, bring story. You don't write story. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, yeah, this uh, this this uh, Aryan will come. Uh, this guy come. The money come. Yeah, come the shoot. They don't shoot at me. They, wow. they don't care about the content. It's just, it's just money everybody are looking for now. You get so that's how it is there. So what are, what are your what are the greatest challenges you experience as a young filmmaker? We know that a shortage of funds. There's a, yeah. a shortage of infrastructure. Yeah. The system doesn't necessarily support, support young yeah. dreams. What what else? What else do you experience as a young filmmaker? Um. Okay. First of all, yeah. Um. The major thing I can say that that really influences my film is just the fact that you know I like to make major films. I I know I feel I know how to make major films, and you know when you're talking about cameras like Red, you talk about cameras like oh, like those kind of like they're not really accessible to everybody. You have to have like lots of money to be able to get these things. And for now, you now have the Red camera now. You now have the crew. Maybe okay, fine. You now finally get the right crew that has the kind of idea that you have. You now start looking for actors again. And in Nigeria, to sell your film. You need celebrity actors. There's no two ways about it. Mm. Nobody wants to be watching you. Um, and if, if even if you have unknown faces and like you take it to those, okay, now let me now say, okay, fine. You know, you now get celebrities or you use unknown faces. You now have to not the the, the the major part. How do you make money from your film? You now start going to meet all these um, media houses like uh, Ebony Life and the rest. The half station. They want to buy your content. That's a good work. Yeah, you now go to meet them and okay, fine. They start going through your film. Okay, the film is nice. Okay, good. Where are the celebrities inside? That's all they. Will, that's all they will tell you. If they, if they, 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 they judge the amount they pay you based on the amount of celebrities that are inside. Are if you have one, they might not really want to pay attention to you. If you have two, mm -hmm. maybe from there you can start talking. If, you, if everybody there are celebrities, ah, uh, you have no problem. You don't even care about the so content. So first off, you need so much money. You need, you need, you need so much. Money. You need to know a lot of people. Hmm. That's the, that's the major thing. You need to know. Even me too right now. I know a lot of people. Like I feel right now, I know I know a lot of people. The problem now is that they don't want to. Well, like, what's the word? Like it's not okay. You now I okay. I I did this film Murphy, like this movie by the Murphy. I had this um Thai guy from Johnson's and Kukai some big brother in the film. And I was close to them because when I was in African Magic, we met once or twice. And I think we worked on it. But I I felt not like really close, but I met them before. So. I had to reach out to them, okay, fine. 
come around for my film and the rest. We talked, we talked, we talked. And even if we were cool a little bit, I still had to pay her. Regardless. So there's nothing you can do. That money part, that money factor it's is really important. important. So it's not even about knowing people anymore. It's not, it's not about knowing Kulian for life. It's not about knowing. They are working. That's how they eat now. That's how they take care of their family. Yes, you have yes. to legit pay them. So that's one new factor I'm trying to see that you find. Anything I want to do from now on, I want to make sure I pay everybody because. You know, gone are the days that you know you are still hustling and everybody needs to see you. I like that about you. I like yeah. that that you. It's important to always support. Yeah, it's important. Yes. Even if even if it's not enough, I I like to make sure that you okay, friend. Let me key into this idea. Let me show you guys what I want to do. I will tell you straight up that I don't have enough funds for this thing. I know that you and you and as an act, as an actor too. I'm pretty sure that okay, everybody are trying to build themselves up. Me too. I'm trying to build myself up. I want to pay you, yeah. but I don't have this. But if you are interested, if you're not, I'm not going to like. Vision of force you or whatever, but I want to try to make sure that okay, fine, I make it worth the while. I make sure that okay, even if I can't pay you this, I have a plan for the film. Last, yeah. last, something must drop, and I'm last, last, I must give you something for the film. That's how I like to make it work out. Yeah. So, your last movie that you shot was yeah. while you were serving. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Yeah, I've, done, I've done a few short things after I can't believe it. Can't believe was, was the last major was the last movie. Major movie yeah, so, it was while you were serving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you were, you were shuttling between. So, Abuja, yeah, Enugu, Enugu, yes. and all that. And at the end, now Kambili has had entries in yeah, major yeah, film yeah, festivals shows, yeah. outside the shores of Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. That that shows that you put in so much hard work into yeah, I do. And I try, I try. getting major recognition from outside the country. How does that make you feel? Well, um, you know, I think you know it, it makes you feel like you know like your contents are not just for. Nigeria alone. It makes you feel like you can do more. You can do more. Like there, there, there are a lot of people outside that want to see Africa in a way that you know, in a way that they have not seen it before. Because they always see Africa as a place that you know people are suffering, struggling, people are struggling. There's no food. There's no water. Yes. There's no anything you get. So what I did was with Kambili was I wanted everybody. To, okay, I, I portrayed um I portrayed this factor. I portrayed the fact that um you know in 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 in, in Africa people are suffering obviously. Kambili was suffering majorly, like throughout the whole film, and I tried to portray it in a way that you know, um, along the way he had dreams of being a filmmaker. I told that story like my own story, like but story. not with the suffering part. Though. I told that I said that you know, growing up as, as a filmmaker, you know that you want to be a filmmaker, you know, but things are not going your own way, so you have to use what you have. But that's how I see filmmaking, basically. You know, you can never have the right equipment, you know, like you can never have the right light, you can never have the right location. You no, know, it's nothing you can do that will come out of first. So the best thing is to see. What you can do with what you have, you know. You see those critics company people that were all around training on Al Jazeera. Some young boys in Kaduna using their phones to do VFX. Yeah. You get that's that's just majorly what, like 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 how I see filmmaking. They were using their phones and they were still making quality VFX. Me, I, I cannot even use my phone to do VFX because it's not on our well for me. You understand? But those guys were using it and they got the recognition they needed. You understand? They were on Al Jazeera. They were on BBC. They're on wow. so many stuff. Young boys, small small boys, you understand? They were just doing and we were like, oh, wow. That was like an inspiration for me to that. Like, fine. You don't need to have the right equipment to do what you need to do. You just need to just have the right, you know, the right idea and try to use do it yourself and work a lot of things and try to make everything work out fine. So what yeah. other projects are you working on now? What should your fans and your yeah. audience be expecting from us and Hamid? Um, okay, um, I'm working on two um like I'm working on a superhero series, Vanish. Yeah, I'm saying a superhero series, everybody I say it to, are like, okay, what are you talking about? Because they feel like it's not possible. African superhero, an African superhero series. African superhero series, yeah, Vanish. Like it's all about all this, you know. I'm trying to do this kind of. If I okay, okay, Vanish here, yeah, um, it, it it has to do with all these totems. The guy, the guy wears these totems that you know, like it was, like when he like when he wears the totem, you know, he has this kind of mystic green energy that starts to, that that flows through him and he rests, you know. You know, I did that green part to represent, you know, obviously Nigeria and you know those kind of things. Like when he wears it, it just becomes a totally different person. That's and nice. we have been working on the VFX for you know the the kind of energy he emits, you know, this kind of flowy mystic energy that he, like, he shoots out of his hands he can teleport and that's 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 the most amazing part like the way he teleports i i don't think i've seen that in africa before maybe abroad i don't know but i don't think there's a like i don't think there's a nigerian superhero series i don't think there's any maybe comics yes i know of comics, comics yeah yes, but, 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 but i don't think there's a film that's an nigerian so i don't i don't think so that's one thing i know that might make the spider-man uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw. I saw. I was like, I saw that. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah I saw that. But the, the good thing about Vanish that I know that would make sense is the fact that number one, 
it's not going to be like nine seasons, ten, hundred seasons that Nigeria series do. You know, you know how they they they, 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 they don't like focus on three seasons. They want to just keep doing seasons, seasons. Mm. This one is just like three seasons, nine episodes each. So I can work on the story. You know, so the story can make more sense. Not that when you are doing like hundred episodes in one season, yeah. that is by episode. Okay, fine. Maybe maybe they are not shooting one episode. The next ah, gaffer. Next episode, we just don't want to make this guy just jump from upstairs in break leg. That's the end. That's the motto we have to you get. So I want to work on the story so story can be really really juicy and everything can work out fine. So, so is the title of the movie? Um, um, does it have anything to do with the idea of teleporting? Yeah, vanish, yeah, vanish. Yes, teleport. exactly, exactly, oh, no, exactly. Yes, yeah. and also Osisu. I'm working on Osisu too. I'm working on two movies this year. Osisu and Vanish. Osisu is a horror movie. Team during 1975. Really nice, like it was written by this, this Russian visualist, Sir uh, Soko, Soko, I can't pronounce her name, but Soko just comes to you get it. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Probably she sees this, no vex, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no guess. So I'm working with her, she and her sister, Sarah and Valeria, yeah, they are from, basically, they are from Russia, basically. So, like, they just kind of like, I, I stumbled on the account on, on, Insta, on Instagram and we just started talking, I was like, okay, fine, let's just see how we can connect with them and work on stuff and the rest. So I've been work, talk, working towards really nice, really nice story. So you know. fans of Hassan Ahmed, you know that he's not sleeping on his camera. He has lots I'm, of things I'm, I'm up his sleeping. sleeves. Sleeping, yeah. You know, so watch out for Vanish. Watch out for the Russian name. Osesu. Osesu is yes, the movie that, actually. Yeah. Osesu, that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Watch out for that. Yeah. And we come to the end of today's episode of exclusive interview. Hassan Ahmed, it was great to have it you. Was a no, no, fam. It was a no, Let me use two hands. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next week on another episode of exclusive interviews. You have a great week. Yep. Bye.